Decoding Rumi's Masnavi by Pirjan. Part 1 How a Qadi was infatuated with wife of Juhi. There is a theme in mysticism called consciousness. We've talked about different themes like death, soul, and thought before. Consciousness is also one of the themes related to the present story. In mysticism, consciousness means freedom. How a Qadi was infatuated with the wife of Juhi and remained hidden in a chest, and how the Qadi's deputy purchased the chest, and how next year, when Juhi's wife came again, hoping to play the same trick which had succeeded last year, the Qadi said to her, Set me free and seek someone else, and so on to the end of the story. Every year, on account of poverty, Juhi would artfully turn to his wife and say, O oh, sweetheart, since thou hast the weapons, go catch some game in order that we may get milk from thy prey. Wherefore has God given thee the bow of thine eyebrow, the arrow of thy amorous glance, and the snare of thy craftiness for hunting? Go, lay the snare for a big bird, show the bait, and do not let him eat it. Show him his wish, but disappoint him. How can he eat the bait when he is imprisoned in the snare? His wife went to the Qadi to complain, saying, I appeal for help against my faithless husband. Cut the tale short. The Qadi fell a prey to the pleading words and beauty of the fair woman. He said, There is such a noise in the court of justice that I cannot understand this complaint. If you will come to my private house, O Cyprus slender one, and describe to me the injurious behavior of your husband. In thy house, she replied. There will be a constant coming and going of every sort of people, good and bad, for the purpose of making complaints. The house of the head be wholly filled with a mad passion. The breast will be full of anxiety and commotion. The rest of the members are undisturbed by thinking, while those breasts are consumed by thoughts that return. Mysticism is not just about post-mortem and supernatural phenomena. When consciousness is achieved, many of life's problems are solved. In this allegory, the woman is the symbol of demonic temptations. Juhi is the one who helps with these temptations and paves the way for them. The judge is the very power of our discrimination, which falls into the trap of being tempted and guided by the thought. The rest of the organs do not interact much with each other, but our thoughts have a direct effect on the heart. Take refuge in the autumn gale of fear of God. Let last year's flowers be shed. For these flowers prevent the new buds from blossoming, and it is only for the sake of their growth that the tree of the heart exists. As for the observer and the observee, because we were unconscious of many things, we developed various ideologies to encourage our thinking to admit them. If I admit that I am ambitious, no one will welcome me, but if I say I am ambitious for religion or ideology, I might be accepted. Because I have put forward a collective idea, I am more welcomed by others. Ambition is a temptation to embrace a particular ideology. The human may become so caught up in this ideology and intellectual conflict that they do not get anywhere. Put thyself to sleep and escape from this vain thinking. Then lift up thy head from sleep into wakefulness. Like the men of the cave, pass quickly, O Kawaja, into a wake, though thou wouldest deem them asleep. O oh, adorable one, said the Qadi, what can be contrived? She answered, this handmaid's house is quite empty. The enemy has gone into the country, and the caretaker is not there either. It is a very good place for meeting in private. Come there tonight, if possible. What one does by night is done without the intention of making people hear of it or see it. At that time, all the spies are intoxicated with the wine of sleep. All have been beheaded by the negro night. The sugar-lipped chanted wondrous spells over the Qadi, and then with what bewitching lips. How often did Iblis palaver with Adam? But when Eve told him to eat, then did he eat. The first blood in this world of iniquity and justice was shed by Kabil for the sake of a woman. Whenever Noah was frying meat in the frying pan, Wahila would throw stones at the frying pan, and his wife's plotting would defeat his missionary work, 
so that the clear water of his exhortation would become turbid, for she used to send secret messages to the unbelieving folk, saying, Preserve your religion from being corrupted by these erring men. How the Qadi went to the house of Juhi's wife, and how Juhi knocked angrily at the door, and how the Qadi took refuge in the chest, etc. The gill of woman is infinite. The sagacious Qadi went at night to the wife, Utkum e Koret. The wife set two candles and the dessert for his entertainment. Without this drink, said he, I am intoxicated with love. At the moment, Juhi came and knocked at the door. The Qadi looked for a place into which he could slink for refuge. He saw no hiding place but the chest. In his fright, the man went into the chest. Juhi came in and said, O spouse, O thou who art my plague both in spring and autumn, what do I possess that is not sacrificed to thee, that thou art always crying out to me? Thou hast let loose thy tongue at my dry crusts. Now thou callest me pauper, now cuckold. If, my dear, I suffer from these two maladies, one comes from thee and the other from God, what do I possess but that chest, which is a source of suspicion and a ground for surmise? People think I keep gold in it, and because of these false opinions, charity is withheld from me. The appearance of the chest is very pleasing, but it is quite empty of goods and silver and gold. Like the person of a hypocrite, handsome and dignified, in the basket you will find nothing except a snake. Tomorrow I will take the chest into the street and burn it in the midst of the market at the crossways. That true believer and Zoroastrian and Jew may see there was nothing in this chest but cause for cursing. O oh, husband, cried the woman, come now, give up this idea. He swore several times that he would do just as he had said. Early next morning he went like the wind, fetched a porter, and immediately put the chest on his back. He set off with it, while the cadi inside the chest shouted in an agony of terror, O oh, porter, O oh, porter! The porter looked to the right and the left to see from what direction the shouts and warnings were coming. I wonder, said he, is it a Hatif, this voice which is calling me, or is it a Peri, summoning me mysteriously? When the shouts followed one another in succession and increased, he said, "'Tis not a Hatif," and recovered himself. At last he perceived that the shouts and cries for help came from the chest and that somebody was concealed in it. The lover who has fallen passionately in love with an earthly object of affection has gone into the chest, though in appearance he is outside. He has spent his life in the chest on account of worldly cares. He can see nothing of the world except the chest, the head that is not raised above the sky. Know that it is confined in the chest by its vain desires. When he goes forth from the chest of the body, he will only go from one tomb to another tomb. At times, our beliefs may make us imprisoned in the chest and see life through that. Our relationships with each other are based on fake images. Thoughts of the human generally cause them to be trapped in an ideological prison. This thought prison causes freedom not to exist. There are various beliefs and chests in the world. Are we willing to rethink and revise our ideologies? Freedom means liberation from the desire to get rewards. Once someone entered a village and claimed to be a prophet. People believed him and began obeying him. After some years, he wondered why he was lying and claiming to be a prophet. He then decided to confess and tell everyone that he had not been a prophet. After he told the truth to the people, they began to cry. We have certainly been guilty and sinful, for you decided not to be our prophet any longer, people replied when asked why they were crying. Our efforts do not necessarily mean freedom. Freedom is a mental arena. Once, nationalism was the dominant ideology and the imprisoning chest of humans. Today, there are other ideologies and religions. Humans leave one chest and enter another. This is a false reaction and does not realize freedom. Freedom for mystics is another concept with a different meaning.
This topic is endless. The Qadi said to him, O porter, O carrier of the chest, give news of me to my deputy at the court of justice and acquaint him with all the details of this affair as quickly as possible, in order that he may buy this chest with gold from this witless fellow and take it fastened just as it is to my house. O Lord, appoint a spiritually endowed company to redeem us from this chest of the body. Who but the prophets and apostles can redeem the people from confinement in the chest of guilt? Among thousands, there is only one person of comely aspect who knows that he is inside the chest. Many of us know that accepting ideologies is of no use to our lives. Regarding the rest of the ideologies and religions, we may suppose that there are no different. When someone is in the chest, their mind becomes spellbound and shut down. They cannot get anywhere as long as they are locked in the chest. People who believe in these ideologies can go nowhere, but mere consciousness of imprisonment in the chest does not guarantee the release from it, as it may cause us to move from one chest to another. He must formally have beheld the spiritual world, so that by means of that contrary, this contrary should be made evident to him. If one has religious zealotry and finds that this zealotry is no longer accepted today, they may depart from that zealotry and enter another chest. If we deal directly with those who are considered saints of the religions, we will find that they are full of unanswered questions too. Loyalists to any faith respond ultimately, going from chest to chest, never reaching freedom. Love is an unknown phenomenon and never captured by the thought. It is not a mental phenomenon at all, and it cannot be achieved through thinking. The heart is the home to love in mysticism, and it is achieved when the heart is devoid of other things. If we get used to something in our life, we will not see it anymore. Couples will no longer see each other's delicacies and changes. Any beautiful scenery is wonderful and fantastic just for the first days, but after a while, it becomes repetitive and usual. Chests make us no longer see jealousy, inferiority, and lies within ourselves. To observe and to act without thinking is the focus of this consciousness and freedom. One must be alone to observe and act. We mean no physical loneliness here. Disturbing thoughts and beliefs do not let freedom come about. The thought chest is full of disturbing thoughts and beliefs and does not allow for freedom. Feeling guilt does not allow for loneliness. Being alone means to be as we are. Only those who are aware of their existence and imprisonment in the chest can embrace freedom. Sometimes people live with disadvantages of the chest and get used to it. No one should consider their chest superior to others. All chests are prisons of the thought and mind. When painters and artists are at the height of their artistic creativity, they no longer see or hear anything because they are perceiving something superior. To observe oneself is very important and causes self-knowledge. The chest here is not merely a symbol of religions or ideologies and may refer to the lack of peace of mind. We must understand the inner innocence of human and observe the mind correctly in loneliness. Faiths, nationalities, and ideologies hinder the observation. Because knowledge is the true believer's lost camel, he recognizes his own lost camel and feels certain. But he that has never seen good fortune, how will he be perturbed in this calamity? Either he fell into captivity in childhood, or he was born a slave at first from his mother's womb. His soul has never known the delight of spiritual freedom. The chest of forms is his arena. His mind is forever imprisoned in forms. He passes from cage into cage. He has no means of passing beyond the cage aloft. He goes to and fro into successive cages. Once a great philosopher who had many observations and arguments came across a man who claimed to be a prophet. The philosopher told his disciples that this man was righteous and confirmed his prophecy. He then ordered his disciples to believe in the man. They followed and believed in him. After some time, the prophet wrote to the philosopher 
and invited him to his faith. The philosopher told him that I confirmed your prophecy because I saw my disciples understand your speech better. You have nothing to give me. In the Quran, if ye have the power, pass beyond. These words came from him to the jinn and mankind. He said, there is no way for you to pass beyond the sky save by divine authority and by inspiration from heaven. If he go from chest to chest, he is not of heaven, he is of the chest. The pleasure of changing his chest only stupefies him anew. He does not perceive that he is inside the chest. If he is not deluded by all these chests, he seeks release and deliverance like the Qadi. Know that the mark of one who apprehends this is crying for help and being in terror. Like the Qadi, he will be quaking with fear. How should a breath of joy rise from his soul? We are to observe and act. Speech and thought should not create a new chest for us. Changing the chest is useless and does not bring freedom or happiness. What drives human to freedom and happiness is consciousness, and it is realized when one gets out of the chest and breaks free.